Hey, how's it going, my FPV friends? Jake here. I'm actually coming at you with a sweet little build that I'm doing here. The Xylo Freak from Get FPV. Um, building it for 6S, 6 inch. It's going to be super fast, going to be super efficient as well, I believe. Uh, I'm here. I'm going to actually show you what you need from the tools to the cam to everything, just getting it all done, getting it set up, ready to fly, even gonna tune it with you, or at least get it flying, you know. Uh, I'll explain the little basics of what to do and everything, and uh, kinda go from there. So hopefully hopefully you guys enjoy this. Uh, I'm super excited. This is gonna be a badass running on these 6S batteries. Uh, I've needed something anyways, so here we go. Time to get to the build. So. Everything that you're going to need, you're going to obviously need some solder. You're going to need tools. So I have ranging from a 1.5 mil to 2.5. And then I have this little guy. I always have scissors. I'm going to cut some shrink wrap and whatnot. Um, you need your frame. You are going to need a battery. You're going to need propellers. You know, we got the flight controller. We have your ESCs. You have your camera. You're going to need the cap for the ESC, depending on your build and everything. I always suggest putting on a cap anyways, because it helps with video. You're going to need a VTX. You're going to need your antenna. I like to have the antenna holder, depending on the build, however you put it. Now, one of the most important parts, of course, is going to be the motors. These ones, I am actually using the 2207 1750 kV Xylo motors that are Popo Pro. And then, of course, you need all your hardware, uh, little bits and pieces. You got your camera mount and everything over here. You're going to have your computer that you're going to need for programming. And uh, obviously, you will need a soldering iron for your solder. So this is what we're building right now. This is a xylo frame. Got the arms, got the sandwich plates. I call them sandwiches because they're like they're two slices of bread. They go together and they sandwich these all in. So this was... Honestly, the most complicated part for me. Uh, it's actually super, super easy. Number one, bottom plate. It's got the part that protects the camera and everything. And then you put the rubber on the bottom. What I do is I will take the arm, put it on here. And what I like to do is put the screw through first, put the arm on. This is just for number one, right? And then this is pretty similar both ways. I like it to be correct. So if you look, the star is going to be on the right side. Always make sure that these are on top because this is where your flight control and everything is going to sit up here. So set that there. And then I take one of my long ones because the flight controller actually came with some long ones so that my stack is going to be all nice and sturdy, durable, and just feed it through. At first, I just hand thread it because we don't need to super tighten it just yet. We've got a little bit more work to do. So just hand tighten. We get another one here. Let's set it up just like this. If you look, the uh, breakaway here actually goes underneath this one here. So put it in. I'm going to put this one in first over here. Now I will put that on and see how they sandwich together right here nicely. So, get another small one, put it in, oops, that's a long one, totally meant one of the smaller ones. The small ones are great because they actually hold the standoffs on. So I do like to actually put the standoffs on while I'm doing it, that way I know exactly where they're going to go and I don't have to worry about those kind of a precursor to the rest of the build, right? So those are actually nice and solid on there. I like to kind of spread them out 
make sure that they're nice and pinched. Same thing with the other ones. What I'm going to do first, though, is I'm actually going to feed through. Put this one on. And then put one of the shorter ones straight through there. Put this one on. Remember, just hand tight. They don't have to be super tight just yet. Do the other one here. I try to keep everything in order just because there's so many little parts and stuff. Now these ones, these screws, we're not going to use until a little bit later. However, now that we've got a lot of this thing actually kind of completed, I'm going to actually tighten these all down. Oops, wrong one. So this one's going to be the two mil, of course. I like to tighten down these ones slightly. Make sure they're all nice and tight here. Put that in. There. Yeah, that's nice and tight. So now we've got the base of the build. We're not gonna need this for a little while either. So I'm just gonna set that off to the side. I will actually start, I'll put those on because we know where the camera is gonna go. So I'll just leave those where they're at. Perfect, right? Now, next part, I usually put on the ESC. Now I did already pre-tin these. Uh, Pre-tinning is nice. It's gonna help you actually stick all of your wires on here a lot easier. So what I did is I just blobbed a little bit of solder on each one of those. As you can see, it's nice and shiny, so there's no issues. The one thing I am gonna do to this before I put it on the frame though, is I'm actually gonna put the power leads on. So I've got my soldering iron all heated up. I'm gonna move my solder over here. I'm gonna set this to the side for now. Bring out the soldering iron, make sure your iron is nice and clean as well, otherwise you're not gonna solder very well. I don't like to solder over things, so I'm just gonna move that over here a little bit. Now I always pre-tin, put a little bit of heat on the wires, make sure I got enough on them as well. Just get it nice and wet, there we go. So now, for those of you who don't, don't know, or maybe do know, but always make the mistake, I always check positive and negative here. Positive red, negative black. I've made that mistake a couple times. And what I do just for the simplicity of it is I'll usually take something with rubber, excuse me, and set it down so that I can actually work and this isn't going to move as much. So let's do the negative first. Always needs a little bit of heat. Sometimes a little bit of extra solder doesn't hurt. So just make sure it's nice and flat on there. I like to make sure it globs on and holds nice and tight. It's nice and shiny still. It's not a cold solder or anything like that. So you know that you're going to get the best continuity out of that. Clean that tip off a little bit. Just notice it's a little dirty. So, next one up. 
Boom, that went on beautifully. Now, I do know that we need to use a cap on here. So I'm gonna put this cap on. I'm gonna actually put it right above, just like this. What I did here is I actually just soldered some wires onto the cap so that I have a little bit of reachability here. As far as this goes, I'm gonna slam it right here and then right here. Looks nice. It's connected very well. Boom. So now you got this guy hanging off here. Now, later on, what I do is I will heat shrink this. That's why I got this little guy heat shrink out. So you will need a lighter or hair dryer or in my instance, I use a little heat gun on my station. Now this is actually ready to go onto the frame. I always get rid of any extra gobs. There we go. Just to make sure I'm not gonna accidentally ground out on it or something. We set this guy down right on her. Boom. Super easy. I like this one. I especially like this on this build because you got you got your uh, one, two, three, and four motors right there. So you're not going to have to do anything as far as, you know, if it was like this, you'd either have to remap or, or uh, kind of spread wires over the center or stuff like that. Don't have to do that here. So I'm just going to set this guy down. Um, I don't need a lot of space at all, really. I want this down as low as I can. Looking under here, just make sure that you got enough room to where it's not gonna actually make contact with the carbon. Making contact with the carbon is bad. I can see all the way through. I'm fine with that. And it's got the nice gummies on there, so it works out beautifully. I'm actually gonna take these little spacers here. Or no, I'm not. I'm actually gonna take the bigger spacers here. These ones don't screw on. These are what came with the hobby wing stack here. But uh, I'm gonna use the thicker spacer just because they slide on nicely, right? And then, for instance, with these guys here, I already kind of pre-cut them a little bit, but we're gonna mount them on, and I like to round them through. I'm actually gonna put this one on this side here. So what I do is I'll grab two screws per for now. Put a screw in here. You don't have to do some crazy tightening or anything like that yet. I think I tightened that one a little too much. There we go. Just lightly tighten it. The next step here is to actually make sure that your wires are the right length. What I'm gonna do here though, is I'm actually gonna take one of these zip ties, I'm gonna roll it under, and I'm not gonna tighten it too much just because I don't want it to be completely set in this way. I do like them straight, and I use this kind of as a guide to keep them straight as well. So now I can tension them a little bit just by pulling on them, not too much, you don't wanna rip them and then clip it down a little bit. I know it's tight, but this will allow me to work a little bit right here. Now, the reason I use these is because of these tight little situations as far as getting it to where you need it while you're holding a soldering iron and everything, because you don't want to fry your fingers while doing this, right? With these wires, you can actually pull off just enough. Now, you're gonna to wanna to pre tin them, just like I pre tinned this. Easiest way to pre tin on these, just hold a little solder on your iron, hold it to the wire, hold it to that. Boom, pre tin. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it kind of close to the tip, make sure there's a little bit of an angle so that you have room to work with it. Wrap it around, set it down and see with that 
pre-solder I did, that pre-tinning that I did right there, it's already nice and lovely put on there. And it's nice. Now, what I do with the small one here is I will take the wire and just make sure it's nice and tight there. And then I'll push it down. Now we know center, you have to go to center. This one looks like I might need to cut it slightly. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. So I usually just go up to the board about where I want it there. Take that tip off, bring it out to the side. And again, pre-tin a little bit. Boom. Nice tip on there. Bring it around. Boom. See that bead never got nasty or anything like that? It's on there pretty nice and clean. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Now I'm gonna repeat this for all four motors. Then, like I said with this one, just make sure they're nice pulled out. I actually like to give them a nice little curve so they're a little more presentable. See right there, they're gonna pinch a little bit, but go like this. Boom. Just get them nice and snug. And see, with all the heat that we're gonna to apply to this anyways, those should actually match up really, really nice. I'm going to get the rest of these done real quick. Um, just remember to continue the process exactly the same all the way around. Okay, guys, one thing I do have to mention that uh, is very important, in my opinion, getting to this, the last couple of motors here, I do want to mention how important it is to take obstructions and stuff like that into consideration. As you see here, the connector for the, the ESC to the flight controller is right here. And you notice it's got some sharp corners there. If you solder these wires and let them sit over that, and let's say you hit a tree or something like that, your wires might get cut. I think proactively on this, and I will make sure to situate those wires to where they're not hanging out right on top of it or anything like that. Make sure to space it out like so here. Cut off a little extra on that one. So it'll overlap the wires and not the actual obstruction, something that can cause damage there. That way you're already eliminating that possible issue. Move that on. As you notice, know, just hanging out right over that. Spread these out. Push that down and see how I have it overlapping the wire instead. That'll make it to where you are sure that it's not going to actually get cut by that. And no worries. So now that we have the ESC and motors wired on, we can move on to the flight controller. Now, what I'm going to do first, though, just to give myself a little bit of room and whatnot to work, is I'm going to put this in. I'm going to clip this guy in first. See? Nice and snug. Make sure it's in there really well. Then... We can take the flight controller, send it to the side here. What I will do now is put on these guys. Oops. Let's 
excuse me. These guys, the ones that slip on. Gosh, they are pretty, aren't they? I can take this, put it on, and I always look underneath, make sure there's enough room. As you can see, it can breathe. Plenty of room in there. You can stick your memory card on, whatever you need to do. That memory card is for black box, just so you know, the black box data and stuff like that. Now, you can clip this on, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to take this wire first. I'm going to have it slide back, and then I'm gonna slide it out. Put this on, clip it on, nice and snug. And now, as you can see here, this feeds the power to it. It has the ESC controls and everything right there. I always take my driver, I'll bring it like this, bring it on, and there should be enough room for it to clamp down right above it. So now it's nice and snug there. Now it will, it won't pinch any of the wiring. I, as you can see in here, there we go. What you're going to want to do is take these little guys, screw them on. And these ones are just hand tightened. They don't have to be super, super tight or anything like that. The reason I emphasize when I talk about spacing it and putting room in there is because if you're doing a power loop and this has happened to me, believe me, it's happened to me. Now, if the FC touches the ESC, boof, gone, both of them, both of them just gone. I've had it happen to me. I was power looping some trees with my remix frame and it was the uh, DYS stack. And that was nice. I loved that thing, but yeah, boom, done, gone. Technically right now, as this sits, it'll probably fly as long as, you know, of course you have your receiver connected and everything. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the receiver. The receiver goes right over here. On here, you have all these little pins here. I did pre-tin them a little bit, as you see. And there's a lot there. So you've got your grounds, you got your three volt, your five volt, you have your R3, usually your RX3, you've got your S bus, you've got TX3, and then you've got RSSI here. You've also got your RX1 and TX1 right here as well. Now, what I'm gonna use this for, this RX1 here, is gonna be for cam control. The uh, TX3, I don't think I'm gonna really use that one, but my RSSI I'm gonna use, my S bus, and then my five volt and ground. I'm gonna use all of these ones right here. My XM plus receiver here, I've got it kind of color coded, right? The white is going to be for my RSSI. Ooh, come on. White is going to be my RSSI. Yellow is going to be my S bus here. My black is going to be my ground, of course. And then your red is going to be your five volt. I like to try to make them as nice as possible. Notice that they're kind of wonky here. Bam. So take them as close to the board as possible. Now just spin it a little bit. Give it a little twisty twist here. A little twisty twist there. And then I spread them out a little bit. I'm actually going to feed them like this. I'm going to solder them on like this. So this is my game plan. I'm going to solder them on like this so that I can mount the receiver so the antennas go to the back. I do have one of these left over from another build. I 
notice this one didn't come with one. So I'm probably gonna mount this one underneath to make for a nice clean build. It should be just perfect. First thing first, let's get this soldered up. I'm gonna turn this around because I'm gonna use this hand and then I'm gonna solder with that hand. Down the ground. Oops, come on. And then I've got my hot. And then I've got my signal. Then RSSI, like I said, goes right next to it. Now it's in there nice and tight. And then that should work just fine going like this. Make sure I space it over to the side so that I can actually tap it in right there. Just like that. Now I'm going to check and make sure that I got enough clearance. And make sure that it's not pressing against the board. Seems all right to me. Also, going to put my VTX on this board. I'm going to put it up as far as I can because I know this camera is going to come back a little bit. That way. It can just chill right there, just like that. We'll get a zip tie. And this will also give us a good idea on if we have enough clearance or not. Uh, seems to be a little close of my, a little too close for my liking. Just because I know there's going to be enough room if I do it, and I got the screws for it, I loosen these up a little bit. This is where the fun stuff happens, because some of this is guesswork, you know. You're never going to be 100% perfect on some areas. So I hit that like that, see if that gave it enough room. Still not enough room. What am I hitting on here? Sometimes you can move this around as well. I'll look underneath. Looks like it's just hitting a little too much there. Let's take the zip tie off. The zip ties are a dime a dozen, if not less. See, we're good here. What I'll do instead is I'll take this off of here. This will give it plenty of room. Loosen up this wire a little bit. Give it plenty of room there. It's nice and tight. There we go. There we go. There. So your stack is basically done there. Especially with this hobby wing. They made this thing so easy to build on. It's not even fun. I'm quite blown away by it. I can put a zip tie through to hold that on. Now, being that it's up top, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a little bit of double-sided tape. I'm going to take a little bit of double-sided tape. That's where scissors come in handy. Cut a little bit off of there. I'm actually going to slam it right on here. Nice thing is now that we've decided to go this route is we'll be able to hit that bind button. No problem. Just peel that. Try 
trying to center it as much as possible. Boom. Take a zip tie. And throw it up on occasion. Take some plier. There we go. Nice and tight there. That's not moving. Now these, I'm not going to worry too much about right now. I'm going to throw that over there, though. Throw this one over here. And boom. Now this quad will fly. Next thing I'm going to do is I usually take a 3S battery. And I know I've connected everything correctly. But I always want to test it and make sure it's getting power and everything. So I'll take a 3S battery and I'll connect it up. There we go. Next up is video. So that is a full FPV quadcopter, right? We've got these here. These are going to be for the camera. The camera is probably going to be the one I install the last, but I do need some wires and stuff. So one thing I noticed on this stack is it doesn't have places to actually solder onto the board, right? Most of them do have a place that has, you know, your video in, video out, stuff like that. Well, it comes in a cable instead. I'm going to turn this bad boy around. Now, I know I'm not going to need a ton of cable or anything like that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to plug it in. One of the big things that we want to do here is make sure we know which wire does what. We're going to go through. We're going to get the instruction manual out. I wanted to see what exactly we got going on here. As you see, it shows here. This is a UART, ground, 10 volt, video out, video in. So it actually has a spot for the power and everything right there. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna clip these wires down to make it easy to hook everything else up. Now, I know for a fact that those clips aren't gonna work for this guy. We're going to basically bring this up. I'm going to bend it up so it comes up nicely. And try to get it to move over here. This way it looks clean as well. I'm going to want to hook up my wires at about this point right here. So I'm going to clip those just like that. Nice thing is I have this if I mess up on that, right? This is for cam control, okay? So it's got a couple different spots in the back here. You got your cam control here, and then you've got your video and everything right there. I did clip these wires, as you notice. I mean, there's, there's plenty of room here. This is gonna chill here, get enough room. This is gonna chill in here. This is just pre-planning. Always make sure when you're doing this, you're pre-planning. The thing I really like about doing it while I'm, you know, cutting the wires and everything while I'm building is the fact that I can actually go, okay, so I need to put these wires in this such and such place. So let's cut this much off, you know. But one thing I did notice that I did wrong here was this needs to be hooked up somewhere. That is underneath here kind of close to where we plugged it, it hooked up the receiver. Let's take that off real quick. Nice thing is with how we did this, it'll open up so we can have access to the board nicely right there. So we want this RX and TX here. Now this actually labels it here too. It says TX and RX. So TX is red, RX is green. These, I'm gonna pre tin And that, my friends, is why you don't solder over the board. On the board, we gotta notice RX and TX. RX is the top, TX is the bottom. So RX is green. 
So bend it up so the other one's out of the way. So Rx. And then Tx. Now that's soldered up to it. And now I will unclip it here. So this one can probably chill and come out here. I'll put this back on. And there we go. So now I think we're completely done soldering to the board itself. So if there's some other mistake, I'm not going to put these two on right now, just in case. We're at that point where if we have to go back and forth, that might get a little annoying. Let's not have to do that over and over again, right? We've got plenty of room here. Looks good. Now I know that I'm not going to be using audio because the camera doesn't have audio. The receiver doesn't have audio itself. Or VTX doesn't have audio itself. I'm going to take the audio off. Now, if you look at the little diagrams, or on the back, usually it's there. I got it covered with that tape. But if we go in and look here, it gives you a nice big diagram of where things go. Smart audio is going to be this white wire. As you see here, green, I'm not going to be using. So I'm going to take that out. And to take that out without you know, snipping it or something so that you can use it later is you just take and bend the little tooth up, pull it out. It's good. It's ready to roll there and nothing's broken and it's not a waste, right? Let's bring these out. Now, one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to clip them all to about the same length. nice thing about t these TPS wires is to strip them, all you have to do, you can bundle them all up, let's say two at a time, and just use your thumbnail. Boom. I'm going to pre-tin all of these real quick. And like I do with other stuff, I'm just going to fan them out. Bring this over. Clean that tip off. These are ready to roll. And then let's pretend these guys here. Let's snip them to all the same size. And there's only three here. I love these ones as well. Boom. Fan them out. Use a little solder on them. Right now, from here, we do know we got a five volt output ground and your high voltage input. This is going to be your input. We need to figure out which ones of these on here are for these. Okay. Refer back to the sheet here, and it looks like number three and four. Three is 10 volt, four is going to be your ground. I'm gonna look over here. I'm gonna spread them out. And these are the two that are ready. I'm gonna pull this out. And what we need to do now is we need to strip the little end off of here. I know my wire strippers are usually a little too big for these small, small ones. I hold it at an angle, just go like that, and gives you just enough to solder up. I'm gonna pre-tin those. You want that? You want the power coming from the flight controller to your VTX right here. It goes on like this. Number three was your 10 volt. So it goes right here. We do want some shrink wrap for this. And I noticed I got this little, these little guys here. So I'm going to just use a little bit of this. I'm going to put it on the long wire, right? 
don't need it heating up and going nuts. So put it as far down as possible. Now this is where I do use my helping hands. These are a great tool. If you don't have some, get some. And just as a reminder, I'm going to stick this in here. That this is three. So that one is my 10 volt. I'm going to need another little piece of that shrink wrap for the ground. There. This clear stuff is kind of cool. Boom, bam. So what I like to do when I got two wires of about the same length, I'll twist them a little bit so that, that heat shrink doesn't come up. Now, I do notice that I got some big ends on here, so I'm going to clip a little bit of that end off. And then I get a little bit of tinning on the tip of my of my uh, iron here. Bend that to where it's flush. I always like to make sure that they're nice and straight with each other. Boom. Right there. Boom. So those are nicely done on there. Now we need the heat gun. And I'm fortunate enough to have this heat gun. It's just a $50 little bugger from eBay. It's still so cool though. So turn it on. Oops. Turn it on. Unwrap a little bit. Now bring that heat shrink down. Boom, bam. Shrink that right up. Nice and tight on there. So those two are set. Now we need to find out. We've got, what I wanna do first is a video. So this yellow wire on here is gonna be video, but which one is gonna be video on here? Refer back to this. Video out is gonna be number two. So number two from the left side. We'll take that off again. We need to strip this one down. Like that. Boom. This is where the death starts getting to be a mess. Doing the little tedious stuff. So there. Now that's tinned. We'll take this one, I still notice that I got a little too much on there, a little too long of a lead. So far, this seems to be the hardest part. The most testing part, because you have to refer back and forth to that manual. Let's get this connected here. The smart audio goes to the TX. A little bit there. Boom. Of course, bring down that heat shrink. Put it on. Shrink it up. Now, I'm not going to use the RX one. So I'm actually going to pull that one out. There's no reason for it in this build. I did notice the last one on here must be video, right? So this should be fairly simple. So I'm going to get that off of here. See, it's the last one there, process of elimination. So. Boom. That's pre-tinned. Now we work on the camera wiring. So I'm going to take this off of here. And what we need, as you can tell, there's three wires for it. There is your power, negative, and your video. So video is obviously gonna go right there. 
So let's do that one first. Get a little bit of that heat shrink again. Cut a little bit off. Boom. And of course, like I said on the last one, put it on the long end. Tin the tip. There we go. A little bit of heat on that. Now we've got the power. Now these ones are going from the TBS are going to go to power the camera. I do want to wrap that a little neater there. Neatly, there we go. We need these powers over here. So let's get some more heat shrink. I've got a little bit more and this should be enough to cover both ends. So right down the center. Get this one on here. Now what I'm going to do, instead of having this hold that, I'm going to have it hold this. Fan these out a little bit just so they're easier to solder, no mistakes made. Fan this out to where I can get it better, bring that down. We just need a little bit of heat. We have created our higher harness here. And I'm going to try to kind of get them to sit next to each other, wherever they need to go here. Now for this part, what we're going to want to do is kind of sort out where everything is going. Camera is going to go here. So let's put that on right now. We've got the wires here. This is what we need the 1.5 mil for. Where'd it go? <laughs> so there's this one. Always go top of. Put this one in. Now don't tighten it all the way, otherwise you're gonna be tightening and untightening over and over again. There. Leave it kind of loose, because you're gonna to have to work with it a little bit too. This one, I'm just gonna connect because it's already here. It's 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 set up where it needs to go, right? So this plug this bad boy in. Now we have this guy. We've made we built the little harness for it. I'm gonna twist this just so it looks a little cleaner. But I don't want it. I like it to look clean, so I'm not gonna have these ones bend a bunch. So now I'm going to plug this guy in here. Make sure it's nice and tight. I'm going to bring this right here. Realistically, I think I can bring this back here. Actually, I'm going to bring this more forward here. So set that there. Now let's Kind of press it a little bit. So we've got plenty of wire to go to the cam. That's good. I'm gonna hook that bad boy up right there. So this guy is gonna be for this guy. What we're gonna wanna do is make sure that we've got room for the cam to move, for this to sit on, so we've got everything going just fine. So what I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna move these. Move them back over here, press them in. Now 
This actually sticks right onto the Xylo uh, top plate. So I'm going to stick this right. I'm going to kind of go back a little bit on it. I like to center it. Make sure I'm not hitting the cam or anything. Let's find out. Do need to push this cam down slightly. There's that. Feels like that needs to scoot over a little bit. So I'll do that. It looks pretty good. Seems like it wants to fall over here. So let's just go like this. And boom, now it's nice and tight. It's not hurting anything. It's not pushing up against anything. I like to press on the side a little bit to make sure that the wires are going inward. I don't even think we're gonna need a zip tie over it or anything like that. It's pretty awesome. This piece goes up right here, but first what I'll do is I'll actually feed this through. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Look at it go. There we go. Don't have to worry about spinning or anything, so I'm just going to spin that around just like that. Push down on her. Make sure the wires are all in the right spots. Okay, perfect. Keep it nice and flush with the top. Then make sure to feed that wire back a little bit there. Just enough room. Perfect. Push this back in. The next step is going to be just testing out, testing out the video. I have one or two of the top screws here. I like the length on these screws too. They made a perfect length. So now you have a fully built quadcopter right here it's about ready to fly there is a few things you're still going to want to do as far as like the programming goes stuff like that that's all pretty simple and easy i'm going to keep this up a little higher here bring it down right about there that way i've got some clearance i've got plenty of remove room I do want this one to be a little higher because I am going to be trying to race this guy. <laughs> That's the word trying. Let's see, is it pulling a little wire? It is pulling a little wire. Let's just bring this in. There we go. There we go. We got plenty of room now. Let's see, that's a good 40, 45 degrees. I'm going to tighten that in. Tighten this side in. And she's ready. She is ready. Now, it's all computer work. All right, so now we are at the computer. We are ready to plug in, get this thing programmed, right? Before we go too much further, the way I download Betaflight is super easy. I just go into Chrome or Google, whatever you're doing. Beta flight, whoa, configurator, download, bam. And generally, we just go to releases here. You find the one that's gonna be for yours. So like me, I did this one. Download it, open it, install it. What you do, 
you find the boot button on your board. On this Hobby Wing stack, it's really self-explanatory. It's right next to the uh, USB slot on it and everything. But what you do for most models out there is you press and hold that boot button, you plug in the USB cord, and you will notice it turns into a DFU mode up here. You go to Firmware Flasher, and for this Hobby Wing F4 board, it is going to be the Omnibus F4. Choose a firmware, we hit that we scroll down just to make sure this has some pretty detailed instructions on stuff this tells about you know what the target is what's going on maintenance releases it tells the fixes target updates all that craziness we're gonna hit flash firmware <clears throat> and wait for it because it's going to erase the board and then it's going to apply the new update to it as well But now we're ready to connect since the firmware is done flashing. Hit connecto and we set up. Now, what I'm doing now is I'm tilting back and forth. So my front should be going up right now, but it's not. As you see there, the side is going up. So first things first, what we're going to do is go into configuration. We're going to change it to a 90 degree angle there. Then we'll save and reboot, right? Right. Whoa, but whoa, what's going on here? It's completely wrong. Oof. You know what you need to do? Go back into configuration. Put that back to zero. Always, always look and see what you're changing here. So I want to change the yaw, not the roll. Hit save. Boom, bam. Super easy. It does this every once in a while where it looks like it's doing nothing. Just hit the, the disconnect button here, hit it again, connect now. Now it's back. So now it should be perfect. There we go. Now we're going to go into ports here. Now if you remember UART1, that was actually going to be used for the run cam. Okay. So we just go over here to peripherals, select run cam in the drop down menu. Now. UART 3, which was right above the S bus, which is the S bus, we hit Serial RX, because that's where our S bus is. This one, UART 6, that's the one that was coming off the wires on the build, we're going to do TBS Smart Audio. Select that, hit Save and Reboot. Donezo, right? Super easy. It did it again, so we got to do this. I've noticed the beta flight's a little wonky like that. Now I'm still able to see that. I don't like that. So what I do is I go into configuration. So the first thing I do, take these off. It uses quite a bit of your CPU. Honestly, we don't need to worry about it. It's only using about 6%. Craft name, I'm going to do, I don't know. We're going to do Reek. Boom. Angle, I'm going to have this probably sitting at about 40 degrees. Now, this is a big one here. Receiver. Receiver. Always go check your serial-based receiver. Unless, I mean, depending on what you are using, most of us are going to use a serial-based. So we hit that. Now, we're going to go to SBUS. Spectrum is if you're using, of course, Spectrum. There's a bunch of other ones on here. Crossfire, uh, FR Sky, some fort, fort, whatever. IBUS, it's all there. So all you, know, you have to do is select it, boom, bam, it's golden. It just runs the code so that it knows what it's sending, what it should be talking to. So SBUS, uh, air mode, I always turn that on just because it's nice in beta flight. It's actually really good. Uh, then we got the dynamic filter, anti-gravity, those things, all those on. Going further down, I mean, realistically, I just keep these all on. Uh, they don't really annoy me or anything like that. And I kind of like knowing that there's something that needs to be a warning. I will set this on, though. It's going to set do the beeper thing uh, until the 
TX is on. Hit save and reboot. And then it'll auto connect again. Power and battery. I really don't do anything in here. It's uh, usually set up all right here, so I never worry about it. Uh, PID tuning in here. I do change a few things. A lot of this I don't probably won't need to change much on, but this I do. We're going to go 75 here, 4 there. Inactivity alarm. And then I'm going to bring this up to 1.44. Oops, come on. I'm going to bring this down to. Go there. This is your expo. I like a lot of expo. I'm actually going to turn this to this a little bit differently because it is supposed to be a razor, right? So I'm going to bring this one in. Twelve by twenty. The other stuff I really don't worry about too much um, until I get into the big nitty-gritty of tuning a lot of this stuff you probably won't have to to be honest with you um, but I'm gonna save that now next little bit here is gonna be the receiver uh, we've already got the S bus selected we've already done the binding on it and everything it's bound to the radio we got the, uh, the channel selected and everything so just make sure to just change it to Spectrum Goffner. It's T A E R one two three four. Hit save. And I don't know why it's not showing up. Let me see if I power it on if it'll do it. So it's bound and everything. It's not looking like it's doing anything there. Configuration seems all right. Ports, let's change these up. Cause I might have been wrong on that. Reboot. Connect. Receiver. There we go. So I just had the ports mixed up. That's gonna happen to everybody. Uh, you just mix them up sometimes. So it looks like everything's good here. Next one is modes. Arm, it's set up automatically. I always move that over. Then I'll hit the switch that we want to be arm that we made up in our radio right there. So now that's arm. Now, the only other ones I really ever do is going to be pre arm. We're going to hit this, scoot this over, flip the switch that you want to be arm. Then. We will go to, where to go? Beeper, I kind of like beeper. So I'm gonna set that up on that switch. But I'm also going to set up, I guess that's it for now. We're gonna hit save here. Now, one of the biggest things that I notice, if you look in here, there's a few options that aren't available, such as flip over after crash. Well, what we forgot to do is go into configuration, and you see here the ESC motor features? You have to go and choose which one you want. So I'm gonna do D-Shot 1200. I'm gonna turn the motor stop on. Save and reboot. So now, if we go back into modes, we're going to see a few other features now. So like flip over after crash. I'm going to flip that over here. Which one was it? I think I'm going to use this one here. So there's threes up there, fours there. Perfect. Okay, so now that's basically all I ever do. To be honest with you. Um, so, I'm going to hit save. Boom, bam. Now, the next one, 
this one, you always want to make sure that you don't have your props on. If you have your props on and you're doing this, it is the dumbest thing you could do to your fingers, to your house, to your ceiling, whatever. To anybody around you, the dumbest thing you could do is work on your drone with your props on. Do not do it. It's bad. It hurts. You're going to get hurt. So, now that we got that covered, propellers are off. I understand the risk. And then as you see, one, two, three, and four are the ones set up there. If you tap on your drone, you will notice it's got some squiggly lines going there. Those are basically your gyro seeing exactly what's going on there. Kind of cool, right? I'm going to hit master here. I'm going to click it, and then I'm going to use the arrow keys to arrow up. I'm going to find out which motors are spinning the correct direction and which ones are not. So one is spinning the wrong direction. Two is spinning the correct direction. Three is spinning the correct direction. Four is not spinning the correct direction. I need to change this one's direction and this one's direction. I'm going to turn that off. Get that off of there. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to disconnect. And we're going to open up Chrome. Normally we would open up Chrome. And we do BL Heli. Oops. 32. Sweet. I just Google it all the time. I hit this one. You download it. I know it looks wonky. So you hit BL Heli, 30, BL Heli Suite here. Now there's going to be two different files here. This one's for regular BL Heli. And this one's BL Heli 32. You click on that. It'll bring you to another page. Yes, you click the download button. It'll load somewhere down here. Something will pop up. Yeah, you can get rid of it, no problem. It's going to open up into a file like this. Don't worry about it. Unzip it. Bring it down. It'll bring it out here, unpacked. Select BL Heli 32. It's already on. Make sure it's on COM4. Hit read setup. Now you'll see it reads your setup, gives you some info there. Boom. Good to go. Now, if you remember, it was motor one, so you have to deselect these three. So motor one, we want to change the direction to reverse it. Hit right setup. Okay. And then we wanted to change motor four, do the same thing, reverse it. Write the setup. Cool thing about this program, there is a little motors tab here. You can hit that. It'll reboot, or the drone will, or the ESC will. And now you can bring it up again and test those motors. And they are done. They're checked, they're ready, good to go. The other thing you can do in this program, you can flash BL Heli right here. You click the button, you hit OK. It'll run through its process. You hit OK again, hit OK again, until the target ESC 1 through 4 are done. I'm going to hit Cancel. I don't need to do it. It's already up as high as it'll go. It's perfect. The next thing that I think is super cool in here is the music editor. I'm going to turn the music on. On each ESC, you have to do this. I'm going to go Google some stuff. Let's see here. Google a good tune, BL Heli. 32, let's see, music, there it is. And usually we can hit videos. We'll do, let's see, what's a good one? Something not too long. Let's see, Rick and Morty, I do like that one. I have that on another one. We got X-Files, what else we got? Ghostbusters. Oh my gosh, Rick rolling people. Let's do this one. So this is pretty self-explanatory. All it's going to do is show you what it is. Now, usually in the link of or the description of the video, you can find it right here. It's pretty easy. Now, if you, you got to read too, 15 and 0, 15 and 0. 
shows the intervals on there. So we're on motor one in the setup. We're going to hit this, and then we're going to copy. We're going to go back to BL Heli 32, excuse me. We're going to paste it up here. Now we want to go 15, and dude man said zero on there. We're going to go to ESC2. We're going to select this, copy. That one again is 15 and zero, paste. We're going to go ESC3. We're going to do 15 and zero, ESC3, copy, paste. And then ESC4, last one, copy, paste. Oof. Zero. Hit apply music. Yes. It's going to do its thing. Wrote OK. So let's disconnect. That's pretty dope. I like it. I'm going to do it one more time. Haha, <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Love it. Okay, so we're going to disconnect. Nice. Loving it. Get out of that. Get out of that. We're going to go back to beta flight now. We're going to connect motors. I'd, like, I'd just like to double check. Click this. Bring it up. Where they're spinning. Good. 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 And good. All four motors spinning in the right direction. Now, the other thing I like to check, double, triple check, make sure each motor is in the correct firing order. So as you see here, you want to spin motor one, make sure it's corresponding with this. Motor two, same. Number three, same deal. Number four, good to go. Motors are done set, it should fly. Now. OSD is wonky. There are a ton of different things on here that you can put on. RSSI seems to be a huge one for people. So what you do is you just select the ones you want. I'm going to switch them all on for a second. Turn them all off. I'm going to turn off this logo. For me, in my goggles, I use NTSC. So it's a little bit smaller, but it's a bigger screen. I like to have RSSI on, and I always put that up in this corner here. The main battery voltage, I like that one down here. Somewhere I can see it. Uh, timer 1, I usually change that to total arm time. Move that actually up here. Let's scoot it over one. Boom. There we go. Uh, craft name, I do like that one being on there because it's kind of fun. Slam that there. Uh, current draw. I do like that one on there. And it's slam there. Now that's all I ever really want on there. Just being honest. Now, warnings. Those are kind of what you want to have on there. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, right here... This is a post-flight statistics. So timer one, that's the one you want to have on there, not timer two. Going back down, minimum battery is how much is left, your max distance. I don't have GPS or anything on there, so I don't have to worry about that. Max speed, I don't need that on there either because I don't have a GPS on there. The, my GoPro will give me that. Uh, your minimum RSSI, I like to have that. Your max current your used ma, your black box, black box and black box log number. Sort of silly irrelevant, but they're good at the same time. Once you start getting into the black box stuff, that becomes a whole new world. The easiest way of tuning your stuff without having to actually do a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to hit save here. That'll save this up. Now, you can also change your font and your logo. What I'm going to do, I like to have... The Betaflight stuff 
You can do digital. You can do clarity. Gosh, that's huge. I actually kind of like that. Vision. Bold. Extra large. I'm actually really digging this one. Upload font. That's going to push it up to the flight controller. So now it'll look like that. I dig it. Hit save. Next step is to test hover it and see how all that rolls out. All right, what's up, guys? Today's the day we are flying the Freak, finally. Got it all set up. This is the maiden flight. I am using the Xylo 1250 Ma 6S75C battery, and it fits amazingly right here. Now, I haven't flown it or anything yet. I kind of did a little bit of little bit of a test hover just to make sure all the props were spinning in the right direction uh, but that's about it this is going to be its first time going fast so let's get this going we're already set we got a model all set up and pretty sweet you just got rick roll now i did put a gopro mount on it just so we can check it out see how fast it goes and everything it's a gopro session 5 just a generic mount i'm not gonna fly this all the time with a gopro on it at all realistically got the popo pro motors on i did put Ooh, that is a nice. good call we need that off of there don't we everything should be set up right i'm really using the five inch props today then check the video Make sure I'm on the right. There we go. Looks like we're golden there. My radio is yelling at us. Holy known unknown flying objects.